welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. I'm Dominique Samario with TV Santa Barbara. If you've been in the TVSB Multimedia Center lately, you've probably noticed our new community art gallery. It's a great way for us to feature local art groups, nonprofits, and really warm up the space for visitors coming into the Multimedia Center. So to talk about our newest exhibition called Portraits of Addiction and Hope, we have three very special guests with us, and I'd love to welcome Janet Rouse and Ron Cuff, the co-founders of Safe Launch, and also Rolf Geiling, the president of the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission. Thank you all for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. So I definitely want to talk about the art, the process of how it was made and why it was made. But first, I'd love to just kind of get to know more about you guys and your organization. So let's start with Janet. Tell me about yourself and Safe Launch. Well, um, we started Safe Launch about three years ago um, as observers of what was going on in our community and noticing that um, there are a lot of services that are provided for youth once they have gotten um, in trouble with drugs or alcohol um, and that there was a need for some more education and prevention in particular. And so that's when, about the time I met both of these gentlemen here, mm -hmm. and Ron and I kept talking about that and decided that we thought we could do something in our community to make a difference. And so you're Santa Barbara resident for years and just wanted to give back, basically, that's right? right? Mm -hmm. That's great. And what about you, Ron? How did you get involved or with this kind of impetus for Safe Launch? Well, Janet uh, was introduced to me by a mutual friend about three years ago. And uh, we found that we had similar ideas about the importance of stopping addiction before it starts. Uh, primary prevention is what it's called. We just found that out this year. <laughs> We've been doing it for three years. And we found out, oh, you're you've doing known, primary prevention. You've known why yeah. you were doing yeah. it, and that's what counts, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, my background is a, I'm a retired Navy commander. I was a pilot in the Navy, and uh, <clears throat> the gentleman sitting next to me is the nicest guy you'll ever want to meet. <laughs> I've heard but that. But <laughs> because of my prior military background, I'm not quite as nice as he is. But I am determined to stop addiction, uh, at least minimize it as much as possible, and, and uh, Rolf is a great advisor for us. That's great. And Rolf, tell me about yourself. and. Also, I'd love to know more about what the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission does. Sure, I mean, I'd rather let Ron's introduction just stand and leave it at that and close my mouth for the rest of the show. It's really but, all you need um, to yeah, know about really. you, right? No, I, I direct the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission, and um, as most people would, would associate with the Rescue Mission, we do provide emergency shelter and food for people in need. But really what's unique about us is that over the past uh, two decades, we really have uh, landed on uh, this whole area of addiction treatment as uh, because so much of the population we're dealing with is dealing with addiction. There's such a high incidence and we've realized if we really want to help people move in from the margins, we need to deal with one of the real uh, prevalent causes. Uh, and so with addiction being such a, uh, uh, such a you know, prevalent factor, we've just realized that that's what we've landed on. And, uh, we, you know, provide residential drug and alcohol treatment. We provide outpatient drug and alcohol treatment and really are one of the largest centers uh, between uh, L.A. and San Francisco doing this kind of work. Really? That's incredible. How mm -hmm. long have you guys been around? Rescue Mission has been in Santa Barbara since 1965. Wow. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Coming up on an important anniversary. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. So then tell me what sparked, uh, like I mentioned at the start of the show, your <laughs> project is being featured right here in TV Santa Barbara's Multimedia Center in our community art gallery. Tell me what sparked, because the interesting thing is, is in neither of your descriptions of your organization, neither of them said, you know, art group or mm -hmm. artist or anything like that. So tell me what sparked this collaboration. Well, I was an art major in college, so there you so go. You There's left the that connection. Out. <laughs> I did. I left that out. And well, I'm an Ron, appreciator of art. Ron loves art. And I don't know, what about you, Ralph? Do you like art? Love art. <laughs> <laughs> he brings in the music component, right? <laughs> we read that art saves lives. So and is that's that what sort what of what we're trying to do with this exhibit? Right. Go ahead, Janet. So <laughs> what we decided back in the beginning was that um, 
Art is a great equalizer and through art you learn about yourself and you also can express your feelings in a way that um, goes beyond language and goes beyond economics and um, people from lots of points of view can appreciate art in a different way. And so we really feel that using the arts and the creative arts all the way around in our organization um, give us something unique and a, a unique voice to carry this message about addiction risk. Um, so we focus on these um, media contests to invite young people to learn about addiction and then present it in some artistic way depending on the contest and then we invite the community to see what the youth have created. So everyone gets that brain science message about addiction risk and take it home. So it's really about sort of learning this lesson and taking some things with you after you're seeing that art. Right, because we feel that there's a lot that people just don't know about addiction. There's a huge stigma surrounding it and there's a lot of denial. So it's really important that we are very honest about what's really going on and um, not demonize the people who have addiction. Well, it seems like this type of exhibit is really breaking down multiple barriers, maybe reaching out to people who wouldn't have sought that knowledge and education and also taking some of the stigma away. I mean, we welcome people to come in and look at these portraits and paintings and, you know, different artistic pieces. And um, it's definitely a conversation starter. That's yeah. for sure. And we tell hope they do. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> um, tell me how this collaboration came about with the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission. Well, it was, it was uh, uh, Janet and Ron approached me with this idea. I've been on the board of advisors for, uh, for Safe Launch and just because so much of what we do, I mean, we would love to say that we are in a, in a declining marketplace, but unfortunately treatment is a growth industry. Mm -hmm. And so many of the clients that we deal with, um, uh, you can just hear their stories and addiction takes root in childhood and adolescence, especially. I mean, there's you know almost nobody who comes through our program who ends up being addicted who says, oh, my, my teenage years were great. You know, um, it always, mm -hmm. And so that's what's so important about what Safe Launch is doing is engaging with young people at this very formative age uh, where behaviors and also the brain is, is, uh, is taking shape. So, um, and, and one of the things that, that makes the show so exciting is it, it um, every piece of art, every photo or drawing is based in a story where a student sat with one of the people in our treatment program, probably about, I'd say almost all the subjects were all people uh, coming through our treatment program or who have graduated our treatment program and that's that's what's so important as we're talking about not demonizing addiction is when you hear somebody's story and you hear kind of you know how they were led into addiction and, and how that transpired it it certainly you know it's also it's a cautionary tale that evokes compassion and it really humanizes a lot more than some other approaches of creating awareness right because they were children yeah they were all children right the the thing that really inspired me about this project was the opportunity that Rolf and the rescue mission gave us to bring teenagers together with people in recovery and to realize that they are of all walks of life. Some are rich, some are poor, all different races. Right. And almost every one of them started around age 12, 13, or 14. Almost mm -hmm. every one of them, is, as Rolf pointed out. And so they're mm -hmm. telling these stories to these teen right. artists. Okay. Right. And through the show, they're telling everyone who comes to see it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so like, we'll go through the process. So they met with these uh, people working through recovery. And mm -hmm. then what did the artists do from that point on? What were their next steps? Well, it was a two-step process, really, for them. So um, high school students went to the rescue mission and to Bethel House, which is the women's shelter part of uh, Recovery Center, part of rescue mission. And they photographed the people in recovery that had volunteered to help because they felt strongly that they wanted to help youth not go down that path. Wow. And so the people that were volunteering also wrote a little biography about their story. So the teens received those stories and were able to talk with them as they were photographing them. And then the photographs were given to other high school students and junior high school students who then interpreted the photographs into art, into two-dimensional art. Wow. 
And so um, they also got the stories about the people. So you really spread the reach to, even mm -hmm. further than just kind of the one-on-one -on -one as well. Right, right. And I didn't bring it, I should have, but we also then created a book of the art and the stories. It's in one of your offices here, but I forgot to bring it in. Well, just encourage people to come by then, yes. right? <laughs> come, come see the book. Absolutely. And the art is for sale, and so people... Where would those proceeds go? They would, safe launch. To, they would go to Safe Launch, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. To prevent further to, to addiction help us, and education. Yes, well, right? to, pro to provide funds for the education and, and for the, the contests. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good point. The, the audience should know that Safe Launch is funded by the community only, primarily mm -hmm. uh, individuals and business owners. So uh, keep that in mind. We don't, we don't uh, receive any government money whatsoever. So you're really just doing this to, for the community and to give right. back. Right. Right. Rolf, would you like to say something about mm -hmm. that as it relates to the rescue mission? Well, it's the same thing. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of, I think, you know, we're also a donor-supported organization. Um, and I think that's really important because if we're going to make headway in addiction, this is really a community fight. This is not something that people can sit back and think that, that government or the school system is going to somehow address right. this. I mean, there's that... Agencies like that play a role, but so many of the approaches that um, uh, that um, uh, things like the school. I mean, we educate, and that's great because there is a conceptual part of addiction. But what I think is so important is what Safe Launch does is really moves the affect with th through some of these projects, um, and it just gets people, uh, gets students. Uh, you know, when you're engaging the creative process, you're you're having people handle information in a different way, and you know, I mean, there are billions of dollars a year that are going into messages uh, to reach uh, out the adolescent generation. So it's so important that, that there are you know, positive messages out there as well. And in this case, the youth are making the messages. Yeah. So we think that's critically important. Mm -hmm. Might be able to connect with other mm -hmm. youth. Peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer messages. Yeah, really absolutely. Important. And mm -hmm. uh, speaking of messaging and um, you know, kind of where the messages are coming from, that actually sort of struck me. I'm sure a lot of addiction and uh, drug, you know, kind of these heavy <laughs> messages, they're coming from people like parents. They're coming from maybe people in the school system. Um, but this seemed like a really unique way to do it. It's really maybe a welcoming way where you're letting these people come in and view something and or be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, in less of a sort of, you know, I'm telling you what's right or wrong, but let me just share my yeah. story with you. Come see. Come mm -hmm. see what this looks like. Right. Yeah, it's an invitation. Right. Learn the science of addiction. The science of addiction is, is growing rapidly in the last few years. We've learned a lot about how the brain develops and how important brain science is to addiction. The fact that the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed until age 25 and therefore if you're going to uh, experiment with addictive substances, you're very well advised to, to wait. And that's our message. Wait, wait, wait. Delay, delay, delay. Because there's more of a risk when you're <clears throat> younger. As, as Rolf said, he rarely comes across anyone who has the disease of addiction who uh, got it when he was 30 or even 25 or even 21. Right. Almost every single one of them, 90% of addiction is contracted around age 13, 14 right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the average age of first exposure is 12. Mm -hmm. People ask us, they say, are you in the schools? We get that question from almost everyone we talk to. No, drugs are in the schools. And the schools have their hands full. They, they're trying to teach kids. They're, they're dealing with changing curriculum all the time. And frankly, they're just overwhelmed. So right now, according to my calculations, about one out of every high school, one out of every five high school graduates is coming out of school uh, with alcoholism or a serious drug problem. Hmm. Wow. And for me, that's unacceptable because mm -hmm. I'm a hardcore military guy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm and not the world's nicest guy. And he smiles, guy. so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And so then the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission, I mean, you're really seeing the firsthand, the effects of yeah, these Yeah, and we're typically seeing, I mean, our, you know, we see clients that, you know, some of them have literally battled this for decades. I mean, wow. what's interesting is that probably, I would say, 15, 20 years ago, the average age of the person that used our services was probably 
early 40s, you know, people that had, you know, that's typically, but now, uh, I mean, you know, we, uh, we see clients in their early 20s and some of these people have, you know, if they started using, you know, uh, in their early teens, you're talking about a 10 year addiction, which is not just a, you know, and, and Ron has talked about the fact that, you know, there's incredible brain science in terms of what that does, but also just behaviorally, if, um, if your response to dealing with the inadequacy and the awkwardness of that every teenager goes through is to alter your the chemical balance of your body and to feel differently about yourself that just you know if you're doing that in your formative years of adolescence that becomes a very dangerous uh, a dangerous process and one that is very hard to break um, if if you know in your formative years that's what you're doing so so that's you know what we're we deal with is a lot of times you know I can see people go through the recovery process and they may be in their 40s or 50s uh, but part of what the recovery process does is almost has them rediscover adolescence and and right. go back to okay where were you when you started this because that's some some people that deal with recovery talk about the fact that if you when you enter into addiction in some senses you you stay at the you know emotional age you were at when you started using them and so that means you can be dealing with you know 40 50 year old people who are still 14 because they've yeah. just never really Progress through the, the maturing process that most of us do, hopefully. And, the, and that and that addresses the the brain science again mm -hmm. uh, in terms of neural pathways. When the, <clears throat> a child, 12, 13, 14, starts using an addictive substance, those neural pathways are changed forever. Mm -hmm. And recovery is is difficult. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's not something that oh well you know you spend a hundred thousand dollars and you're fixed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's it's something you have to cope with. For the rest of your life, and mm -hmm. we Safe Launch, we mm -hmm. want to minimize that. Mm -hmm. That just it's it's so so hard on families. It's mm -hmm. so hard on people to to have to deal with that their entire life. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it ruins friendships. It ruins marriages. It, it it it's a dominant factor in crime and child abuse. Uh, every societal ill that we have. Is is rooted in addiction, so preventing it is much better than mm -hmm. treating it. I yeah. think even Rolf would, sure. would agree with that. Certainly, we really have to try to prevent it. And our primary message at at Safe Launch is that kids are up to six hundred percent more susceptible to addiction than adults. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's really this focus on educating right. the youth, because like Rolf has said it would be easier to not have to address this later if you mm -hmm. just never got started, obviously. Right. It really takes you down a whole mm -hmm. other path yeah. for yeah. your life. Tell me some, um, if you remember, if not, people can come visit <laughs> the uh, exhibition, but what are some of the stories? What are some of the stories that were told um, in the exhibit that were told to these youth? Well, it, <laughs> they're very poignant and I hope as many people as possible come to see the, the show because we have quotes from all of the oh, people in recovery. And I, I wish I could remember them verbatim, but they're unbelievable, the things that these people in recovery are telling these kids about their struggle that they're going through. And they will continue to go through. I think I read one, and this is not in quotes, but it was something along the lines of that it started in their youth and it took their youth away, which is something that you both have mm -hmm. touched on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and one of them that strikes me and right at my core is that this one young gal said that she lost her children mm -hmm. from her addiction. Oh. And so for me, that's really the core of what drives me and just the that overwhelming um, sense of care and protection that I feel for children and then to be a mom and to imagine what that could possibly be like and to feel like to know that I lost my children. I mean, people aren't choosing to be addicts and that's the message, you know, people really need to come around and, and understand the science and understand how it changes your brain and, mm -hmm. you know, these people aren't bad people. They have a disease and they've they're doing the best they can and sometimes it takes them a long time to realize that they they have the power and the strength and the support to be able to to work and fight against it. I know. What 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 people have to understand is that bad behavior 
is nothing more than the symptom of this disease. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've been treating it the wrong way. We've been attacking it the wrong way through law enforcement and incarceration for way too long. We need to prevent it. That's what we need to do. Does the Santa Barbara Rescue Mission support preventative measures? And yeah, I mean, certainly, I think to me having, I mean, we have a just as, as, as uplifting as a place as it, as it is to work, it's done in against the backdrop of just human suffering. And I mean, on a daily basis, if I overhear what our staff is dealing with and what the receptionist deals with, you're dealing with people who are just in desperation. And uh, um, as, as rewarding as it is to bring people through the recovery process, I'd much prefer they be spared the agony of it in the first place because I mean, it's you know we're we're focused on treatment, but even treatment is a very uh, it's a very high risk. It's a very challenging frontier. I mean, one in five people who start treatment programs actually finish them, and wow. of those who complete treatment programs, again, only one in five will maintain their sobriety five years or longer. So, like Ron said, this is not something you can say, okay, well, I'll go away to you know we'll send our child off to rehab and they'll get fixed. It it becomes a lifelong struggle and. Uh, um, it, it marks people's lives, and that, you know, I think just about anybody that I, you know, that I've talked to that's come through our program would say, yeah, it's a huge sense of regret that there's, you know, um, that if if we can help teenagers not start in the first place, and I think what I love about Safe Launch is that the approach is because part of part of being a teenager is being, you know, a re being in rebellion, <laughs> not <right>. listening. And, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's what marked <laughs> us as teenagers too. And so it, to sit there and kind of employ that same approach of just saying, "Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this," and that's where um, the approach of Safe Launch of really being a student-centered uh, organization, where the students are coming up with the messages themselves, is powerful. And I think that's you know that that is what I've seen be transformative, even for for my own kids who are teenagers. Um, you know, they didn't participate in. You know the safe launch contest, but they're they're interacting with addicts on a regular basis, and they're hearing the stories and the human side of it. And I think that probably serves as the strongest deterrent for them in terms of putting together. Wow, you're this is this is not something to be trifled with. And I, I would like to say that the approach that many people have been taking, mm -hmm. and maybe are continuing to use, that of harm reduction. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not working. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean when you say that? Well, the, the concept of harm reduction is it's okay to experiment, but just do it a little bit. Don't do it too much. Like do it in my home. Oh, yeah, do it in my home. Don't drive. Something. Don't drive while, right. you're, while okay. you're doing it or that that, this sense. sort of thing. And it, it's great except for the fact that it completely ignores the risk of addiction. Mm -hmm. Completely right. ignores the risk, risk of addiction. It's not taking that science into account right. that we were right. discussing. So when I hear parents say, oh, well, you know, I let my kids drink at home, oh, man. <laughs> or, or even uh, worse, to allow somebody else's child to drink in your home. Mm -hmm. right. right? There's a huge responsibility that goes with that, and it's not the responsibility of them being unsafe on the road or perhaps being a victim of a crime, right? Because there's a lot of risk right. for children and youth to be in that situation, so it's a, it's a big deal. I want to kind of say something on a private, on a uh, positive side, though, because yes, this is this we is, do like positive this things. Is, We're actually getting this is pretty heavy. The, the show. Okay, so it's um, a heavy conversation, and it's a really important one. But I think that it's um, I'd like to talk about the why we're doing it because that awareness of um, the harsh realities of addiction and the difficulties that everyone faces in treatment and um, incarceration, if it goes that way, we're talking about what we talked about and developed something because we wanted to do something. And so I think that's really where we can hopefully touch the viewers who might be watching or listening to this is that there's something you can do. It's not just sit back and think, oh, there's another car accident or, oh, there's another college student who fell off the cliff, right? It, it, those things are horrible. And the enormity of them right? It just cuts me to my core. But that's where you can engage. And that's where you can say, I think that this program and these programs can make a difference and are making a difference. And that is the perfect segue. Thank you. Um, for my final question to each of you, um, everything you've mentioned is about, you know, one of a few things. One, what an important role 
your organizations play within our community. And also um, that there is hope. The exhibition is called Portraits of Addiction and Hope. Mm -hmm. And there really is some hope. So what would you want to say? You have a platform right now, briefly. What <laughs> would you want to say to the community? What would you encourage them to know, to get involved in, or um, maybe to participate in so they can make a difference? Well, for the entire section, you know, from ages, I, I think that all of our organizations and all of our programs um, would really benefit from the com more community support. Okay. So the youth can be involved in our contests. The youth can be involved in our Santa Barbara Teen News Network television show that we make here at TVSB. Um, there's room for more. And um, we also have another program that has nothing to do with um, Santa Barbara directly in terms of TV, but we take a plane around California and we invite youth to come out and meet us at the airport and have a brain lesson and paint the airplane, which happens to belong to Ron. Mm -hmm. And so that's very, very fun and, and it, it takes our message out further. Mm -hmm. So we fly the message out See, there to the greater community so people can engage with us on that level. That's perfect. And, and what, a, what about you, Rolf? Well, we're always, I mean, we, we have just a number of opportunities for involvement. Uh, all really? our services are based by, you know, we have volunteers and, you know, we have all that information on our website and uh, um, both people that just come and uh, provide basic services to people who are involved as mentors uh, and tutors in our recovery program. Um, uh, and that's that's an important you know what's what's it's important for people who are going through addiction to realize that um, there's somebody who cares about them and that's the strong role that volunteers play uh, and that's just people in the community you know kind of communicating the value and the matter they have because when I look at the 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 exhibition um, one of the things that really hits me is just the incredible beauty of people and sometimes we see them as junkies we see them as and obviously they're They've been in some dark, difficult places, and they can become, you know, frankly, quite unlovable. And what I think these students have done that's so uh, important is just remind us of that human side of, you know, that there's a person in there, and they are an incredible creation and, and have incredible beauty. And that's, uh, so we, we uh, uh, love partnering with people who keep that message and, that, and share that view. That's so perfect. And with that, I really would love to invite the public mm -hmm. to come and, and see the exhibit and read the quotes um, that Janet mentioned. They're very powerful, but mostly it's really beautiful. Um, it's really beautiful. And so you can come, the exhibit will be up this spring here at TV Santa Barbara. Um, you can visit our website to find out our address and more about what we do and also watch lots of our programming online. Our website is TVSB. Dot TV, and also to find out more information about these two fabulous groups, you can visit their websites at safelaunch.org and also sbrm.org. So uh, please visit those websites, learn more, and come down and see the exhibition. Um, and until next time, please watch all of our programming on TVSB Culture. And I'd like to give a big thanks to the crew that makes this show possible, both staff and volunteer. We couldn't make this happen without you. So thank you for watching the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast.